Welcome back friends of Night City, it's time to make some serious builds for patch 1.6 and of course everything you see as usual is on very hard. Even though CDPR tries its best to make us not so powerful, we will never stop being totally overpowered in this game. In this video I will show you a totally overpowered level 15 build that is able to one shot every enemy even on very hard and also a new money glitch that is even doable if they patch the first one. The first weapon we will use for this build is the Lizzie pistol, which is no less than a 6 round pocket shotgun with an insane headshot damage multiplier. Normally shotguns don't have a high headshot multiplier, but the Lizzie has and its 6 shots are more than likely to make some very critical headshots for you, which are devastatingly strong with its 240% headshot multiplier. Our second weapon of mass destruction will be the scalpel. The scalpel is a very unique blade which you can also get very early in the game that activates 50% critical chance as long as you are in Sandevistan mode. If you don't know what Sandevistan is, Sandevistan simply slows down time and you are able to one shot or move around your enemies very very quickly, as it was shown in the Edge Runners anime series. And if there are still some enemies not bowing to your scalpel attacks, then we still have our last weapon which is is the Dying Knight with its awesome 360% headshot multiplier which is simply the highest multiplier in the game. This weapon simply multiplies all the existing base multiplier, the trajectory analyzers and even your abilities by another 1.5 times, giving you 360% instead of the usual 240%. The Lizzie pistol can be collected in Lizzie's bar after you spoke to Takemura in the diner after the Heast mission, simply go to Judy's basement and collect it from the table. The scalpel requires you to do a bit more work because it is a mission reward. You have to go to the afterlife and speak to this guy. He will give you a mission called Big in Japan that requires you to go to the docks in Chinatown and rescue a man which was transported inside of a fridge. You have to make sure that this guy survives all the attacks from incoming enemies so it is best you make a manual save before you actually attempt this mission. No matter which weapon you actually use, it is best to activate Sandevistan before you enter an enemy location. And then either make use of the 50% additional increased crit chance when you use a scalpel, or you simply sneak in with your Lizzie pistol. You can also activate Sandevistan to slow down your enemies, make some very clean nice headshots, or you use a stealth approach by activating your optical camo alongside with your Sandevistan mod. When you activate Sandevistan and optical camo at the same time, you will even prolong the use of optical camo, so you can use optical camo for a longer period of time. And then simply use your Lizzie to overwhelm your enemies or your scalpel just to mow down everyone. This is by far one of the most funny playstyles and you can do that as early as level 15. To get all the needed money for all the cyberware and weapon mods, there are two ways to generate money very early on. The first way is when you duplicate any random item that you have more than two copies of. Press and hold down the cell button on that item you want to duplicate, adjust the number to be minus one than you actually own and press the confirm button additionally while you still hold the selling button which opens this menu. And now it is important that you did not move your cursor because it has to stay still on the item you just sold. Then it will immediately open the selling menu again allowing you to sell them all again. Now you can buy all your items back normally, that way the vending machine will get its 20,000 money back and you have more items. You didn't really pay for these additional items, so the vending machine stays at 20k but you have more items. When you have duplicated enough items, you can simply get the majority of money out of the machine, keep a couple of your items for yourself and then skip time 24 hours and start the duplication again. This way you can get infinite amounts of money very early on with any kind of vending machine. Of course the amount of duplication, the size of your stacks is limited to the money on the vending machine side. So if you increase the money on the vending machine size or if you go to a vendor and buy all his items, you can create far bigger stacks and get millions easily. This is covered in the mega money glitch video and you should check it out if you haven't watched it already. Of course this can also be used to create infinite amounts of materials as well. 
Since I'm assuming this will be patched soon because it is an absolutely major glitch, you can also generate money with any assault location in the game, because these people are also dropping money when they die. Especially the leader of such a location is dropping a significant amount of money. This guy here for example has 800 eddies in his purse and we can simply hide his body in a body hiding location here located in this trunk. The game now is creating a floating brown bag with his 800 eddies. You can loot these 800 eddies and when you run far away from this location and return to it, the game is respawning the same brown bag with the same 800 eddies. You can do that as often as you want to, simply rinse and repeat to farm more money. However, this is way slower than duplicating money and it always requires you to do this setup. So I rather recommend you to do the other glitch before it's patched because that also allows you to store millions of money with your items in your inventory. The first thing you should actually do with all your hard earned eddies is pay a visit to Victor and pay off your debt. This allows you to buy the epic version of the Kiroshi optics as well as a double jump. The double jump from Victor will cost you 30,000 eddies, but it totally doesn't matter if you have infinite amounts of money anyway, so definitely do the money glitch as long as you can. If you still have duplicated items in your inventory, you can also sell him a couple of buckets or ashtrays to get all your money back. You will also need 3 trajectory analyzers so you can already get them as well. But now let's finally take a look at the build. First of all we use epic versions for those iconic weapons, so you will have to have at least tech 12 and grease monkey to craft these epic versions. The first weapon and the most effective weapon we can use here is the scalpel. It has 656 dps, which is an insane amount for level 15. You will literally melt through all your enemies when you use this weapon. In the scalpel we will place two cold shoulder mods, of course you could also go for the 10% crit damage mod, but 10 is not always better than 5. Most of the time, especially on lower levels, we won't deal critical damage anyway, so even with Sande Vistan it only works 50% of the time. So 5% on every hit is better than 10% on every second hit, but that is only during Sande Vistan, in reality it is far less than that. So if you want to have the most DPS in your builds then definitely go for the cold shoulder mods and always prefer DPS increases over situational increases. The Lizzie has 150% headshot damage and 240% when you equip this weapon because the game only adds your personal stats and the trajectory analyzers when you actually equip this weapon. Simply add a Kanotsugu optics or whatever optics you prefer. Also add two crunch mods, rare crunch mods can be crafted when your crafting sub skill reached level 9. The Dying Knight deals 360% headshot damage, again the full amount, the full damage and the full DPS is only shown when you hold this weapon in your hand. Definitely apply the RC7 Liga because the RC7 Liga increases your DPS. If you find an epic or legendary one you will even get 20% or 25% more DPS if you apply that to your weapon. The closing part is a bit bad in patch 1.6 because you can't buy any closing crafting specs from vendors anymore and you can also not buy any closing mods from vendors. And that is very problematic because the only way to get proper armadillo mods is to craft them yourself. So you are dependent on finding an armadillo crafting spec very early in the game if you want to make a good build. Similar for the street cred mods, if you want to apply street cred mods in your closings you also have to find a street cred crafting spec. I was looking around and actually quickly got this and if you also want to use the corporate blazer then you can find this at the location in Northside. Gladly the t-shirt is one of the few crafting specs which you still get at the beginning of the game. For your eyewear this is even worse because your eyewear was previously the spot where you could apply Fortuna mods, Bully mods or Dead Eye mods, one of the most valuable mods in the game. And as of now you can't even get them anymore in patch 1.6. Even if you craft a legendary eyewear, they won't spawn in these eyewears. However, I managed actually to get some anti-burn or anti-poison mod for your trousers. Because when you craft your trousers or skirts or whatever, if you still have some random crafting spec for trousers or for skirts lying around in your inventory and you craft a lot of them, it will actually happen that you can spawn anti-burn mods in these crafted closings. And if you have the waste node want node perks then you can dismantle these closings and get these mods back and use it in different closings. So crafting specs and closing mods are a very big issue in patch 1.6 and I hope they really get fixed soon. The corporate slacks can be found at this location in Northside, simply go there and loot them. And the solar boots can be found at the Kabuki market in the third floor when you use the elevator. 
All of this cyberware is actually purchasable in Watson, so we don't have to go outside of Watson. I've already shown you the location for the Epic Hiroshi, you simply go to Victor and equip it with three trajectory analyzers. All your eyewear is actually stacking, so the trajectory analyzers is stacking as well as the weak spot detection or anything else. However, 2% additional crit chance is not useful, so we definitely go for the trajectory analyzers. Definitely go for an adrenaline booster, because that really helps if you use the scalpel a lot. Synaptics Accelerator and Kerensikov is only optional, because Kerensikov only really gets useful if you have a legendary version of it. Definitely go for increased armor, use optical camo and also grounding plating. If you have body 12, you can actually swap the grounding plating for the fireproof coating. For the operating system, we don't use any Netrunner OS, here we use the Sunday Vistan OS that will greatly help you mow down your enemies with the scalpel or with the Lizzie or with the Dying Knight. The earliest version of Sunday Vistan can be found at the Ripper Dock in Northside. Then the rest is just as usual. We will get the titanium bones for increased capacity, the skeleton for increased health. The ballistic coprocessor is only useful for the Dying Knight because Lizzie is a tech weapon that doesn't have bouncing projectiles. However, if you want to play with the Dying Knight often, you should definitely get it. And then of course don't forget the tendons for the double jump. For the skills I actually made a terrible mistake. I currently have 8 body, 8 reflex and 12 tech. But I spent a couple of points into a cool, which I should not have done, because I don't use any skills from cool anyway. So if you want to make this build, rather spend all your points on tech, reflex and body instead. Don't go for anything else, especially body got a huge buff in patch 1.6 and it is very much needed to run around with certain weapons. In the body tree during early game, you should only go for the capacity and for the health regeneration perks. And then in reflex for handguns, you should go all in if you want to play a lot with handguns, which is for the Lizzie as well as for the Dying Knight. For the blades, we will pick the most useful ones, increased damage with heavy attacks, increased speed and also increased armor when running around with blades. And the next one would definitely be reduced stamina when using blades. So definitely use your next points on this perk. In the tech tree you actually only need true craftsman, grease monkey to craft epic items and the field technician to get 10% more damage for all your crafted items. So that's it, I hope you really like the new weapons, the new best early build. Stay tuned for more builds, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.